Hello. Good evening. How y'all doing? You know, it's a good sign when you got a bunch of teenagers that are on the front row. That's actually a good sign that there's a healthy church is what the youth are doing. So we had a great time. I'm, I'm glad Etienne Blum's been in from South Africa. And we've just had some really good time with him. Tom and Lydia are at the hospital. And uh, went in yesterday afternoon. Her water broke. And she's pushing right now. So should be any moment. I mean, that's strength for women. I think she asked for the epidural about 530 in the morning. So hats will go off to her. I'm thankful I'm not a woman. <laughs> so anyway, it's just, uh, we're going to have a good time tonight. God is so faithful. And uh, I would just en enlarge your anticipation and expect God to really do. He said he'd do it seemingly abundantly above all that we'd ever ask or think. That's great, isn't it? You know, there's only one thing that can get in the way of God coming through. You know what that is? There's actually a scripture. It says the traditions of men make void the word of God. Our traditions, our mindsets, things that we've been taught will actually stop us from advancing of what God may want to give us. So I always want to keep my heart open and say, God, flood me and flood my house. You know, we get, Kimmy's my wife. We have three kids. All of them are on fire for God. And we want to keep that for the rest of our lives. You know, that's, that's a good test. That's like somebody who's been married 40 years. You know, that's a great testimony, isn't it? So anyways, let's open up prayer. Father, we just thank you for your goodness. Lord, we just want to host the presence of God tonight. We want heaven to come. And we want to go and ascend to heaven as well as heaven coming to the earth. Lord, enlarge our anticipation, Lord. Cause our faith to be rich tonight. Lord, that you would do to our eyes and our ears and the eyes of our heart that you'd open them all up, that we would see and be apprehended by Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you for Tom and Lily. We ask for grace, grace to be upon them, grace over Lily's body. Just over Nathan coming forth in the earth, Lord, we bless that birth in Jesus' name. We ask for a real strength that you would go and aid them and give them rest. Lord, I thank you for Scott and Jane being there to support them. We ask for just strength and that you would just cause the joy of the Lord to be in their room. Lord, we just ask for an open heaven over Rockwall, Texas. That you'd open the heavens over Trend and cause us to interact with heaven, Lord God. Cause your anointing to be rich, Lord Jesus. Lord, we invite you to come and overtake us. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Father, we just love you. Because you loved us first. Tonight our desire is to love you the same way that you love us. But to love you absolute and, and spirit and truth. And help us, Holy Spirit, that we can receive the love of the Father so that we can love others. Because your love brings unity. Your love brings victory. Your love sets us free. Your love is truth. It's all about your love. Your love brings reconciliation. And most of all, reconciliation inside of you. That is what we want to see, Father. We want to dwell inside of you as well. So that we are awestruck, that we stand in amazement the whole day, all day long, during the night. Because of who our Father is, how great His love is. Tonight we open up ourselves, Father. We just come and open up our spirits, our hearts, our whole being to you, to your touch, to your breath. But we want to declare it's truly all about you tonight. Now when I ask you, please do to us whatever you want to do. That there'll be no agenda tonight of any man. 
no religion, no philosophy, no nothing, Father, that stands between you and us. That you just come and give us a burning fire, become that burning bush inside of us, a burning bush for you. Welcome your Father tonight, your fullness, your presence. Welcome the angels. Welcome all of creation as we come in unity with creation and, and worship you, Father. We come and align our hearts with yours. That we release your love, the sound of heaven, the fragrance of heaven, the fragrance of our King, the great I am. Our God, our Lord of Lords, our Master. Our Adonai, our Elohim. Welcome to all of you. What an amazing view we have. And what an amazing time to just do. I won't blame you if you look outside all the time. <laughs> just to look at God's creation, the, how marvelous he is, how amazing he is. I don't know how many of you experienced this day has been a difficult day. It was absolute chaos in the spirit. And it was a day of a lot of warfare and things. And yeah, it was just difficult. And I said, Lord, get our eyes back onto you. Let we not look at the difficult situations. Come and hook our eyes into you. Let us focus on you and not on any man. Anything, any man that comes and tries and steals your impartation, your glory from God tonight, it's not your war. That he told me now before we left and said, Etienne, it's not your war. I will fight it. Just go and enjoy me. Soak in my presence. And that is what I want you to do tonight. I want you to be open, to receive, to soak in His presence. Because your desire must be when you leave those doors, you must never be the same again. That you become radical, radical for God. That young man sitting there at the back with a cap on. Man, you're going to be so radical for God. There's a desire in you and you've had encounters, you have times in your life that you feel, but there's, you know there's more and you want to walk in it. That there's going to be a sudden move of God in your life. That's going to change you and you're going to start doing things that nobody associated with you. It's way out there. It is like, 
What? What is he doing? It's like no less than impossible things. And it is things, it will be things that are not attached to your nature of the person you are. It will be so radical. God's just going to touch you walking in the street and there will be some young youth people that are lost. And suddenly you'll just go to, hey, look at this. And you'll do something amazing in the name of Jesus. And they'll all change and accept the Lord. So there's a radical move of God coming in your life. Be ready. Be ready. You're an amazing guy. You've got an amazing heart. And it's time for you to run. It's time for you to run. I want to share tonight. I, there's so many things I want to share with you. His God is so amazing. He's never ending. He's so special. And a lifestyle with God is a lifestyle of extravagance in all aspects. In the spirit, to, to be, go to heavenly places, to see him, to, to be, to, for him to teach you, to share with you. Um, it just never stops. He never stops spoiling his children. It depends. Where do you look? Are you looking at the blessing of him, at the truth, or at his heart, and everything in your life? Or are you looking at your circumstances? Because even in your darkest circumstances, he spoils you. Believe me. Now tonight, I think it's very important... A lot of people ask Etienne, yes, you move in the spirit. Yes, you've got heavenly encounters and all those questions. Yes, you see angels and all those things. How do I get there? If the first two things, if I can share, if I had to tell you, give you two keys, it's a choice that I made the day that I got saved. Radical obedience. No compromise. Those two things should be key things in your life. Radical obedience, no compromise. Now, if we look at a foundation of a supernatural lifestyle, of how to walk with God, what do I need to do that God can manifest in my life, that I can go, Hebrew 4, that says, I call you to move boldly to the throne. And how many times God has spoken through his word that he has had encounters, face-to-face -face relationships that has appeared to people. People were taken in the spirit because of the desire of God to have a love relationship with you. Then I would say we have to look in my life. I would say John 17 plays a major role. So tonight we're going to go through John 17 on Wednesday night. I'll take it further. That will take it how to function in the promise and in the power of God. That will do on Wednesday night. How to move in the cloud of darkness. Because where is God seated? If you go in the word. Where is his throne? In the cloud of darkness. And what do we do? We look at the darkness and we miss God inside of it. John 17. Let's start. These words spoke Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven. Listen how he speaks here. This is Jesus coming tonight to give you the keys of a supernatural lifestyle. Don't look at Etienne. If you're going to look at me, you've missed it. These words spoke Jesus. So I'm just going to repeat what he says, and then we're going to go a bit into Revelation, go in a little bit deeper into it. And he lifted his eyes up to heaven. Why? There's your second key. Your first key, actually. Your lifestyle must be a lifestyle that are focused on heaven. Always lift your eyes up to heaven where your heavenly father is seated. You, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is inside of you. 
But heaven is above and that is the place of habitation of the Father. Now, why do I have to lift my, lift, lift my eyes up to heaven? Because Jesus said, I only do what I see my Father in heaven doing. it." What do you need to do? Everything in life that you encounter, that you go through, the first thing, the first reaction in your life is, what is my Father doing? What are, what are His words? So there goes your first key. You always lift your eyes to heaven because we are created to glorify God. It means that we need to bring heaven to earth. And if you don't see heaven, what are you going to bring down? What are you going to bring down? People, and you get people out there and we preach it that you can't go to heaven. Why did Jesus die for you? So that you can have a face-to-face -face relationship with Him. So that the veil is torn. So that heaven is opened. But the reason that we're not going to heavenly places is because of our own hearts. Our own doubt. Because of tradition and doctrine and religion. And we've allowed the devil to come and steal. But I'm going to give you, tell you something else. When I was just saved... I used to belong to a very, very conservative church group. I'm not going to mention names. All churches have got something good. And all churches have got something bad. If you're going to try and find a perfect church, the moment that you walked in, it was not perfect anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's fact. So for the first two weeks... I was saved for a week and God opened up my spiritual eyes that I could see angels, I saw demons, I saw into people's lives, everything. And then for two weeks, I went against this church. How could they steal Jesus from me? How could they keep all these things away from me? And I went absolute ballistic about it. I was furious. And one day I was sitting in my chair at home after two weeks of crucifying this church. And the Lord asked me, he said, Etienne, have you got a Bible? I said, yes. He said, go and look in your house. How many Bibles are there in your house? So I went and round and looked and said, there are nine, Lord. He said, so why do you blame the church for not having a relationship with me? It's all in the Word. Don't blame any organization. Don't blame any other person for your relationship or lack of relationship. It's all in the word. Okay. Let's carry on. And then he says, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. What, is, what does Jesus mean there? By glorify me so that I can glorify him. Part of your um, purpose and your plan here on earth is to glorify him. You were created for his pleasure. You need to restore glory on earth. The whole earth will be filled with my glory. Numbers 2114. Why does he actually talk about, refer to glorify me so I glorify me? He actually means, touch me, impart me, so that I can touch and impart others to release your glory and your presence. So what is the key there? I need to have a relationship of intimacy with him. I need to have a relationship where I am aware of him all the time. That I exercise my spiritual senses. That is why you've been given spiritual senses to be at least one of your senses. You must be aware of God, the Holy Spirit, each and every second. And if you don't exercise it, you won't be aware of him. Have you exercised it today? Don't answer me, please. Because there are only a few. If I had to be honest with you, there are four people that have exercised the spiritual senses today. 
exercising your spiritual senses is an act of love. It's a desire that you show God what is your desire to become like Him. What is your desire to be a replica, to, 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 to be the reflection of Him here on earth? To show the truth of who your God is. And as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. There's another key. What is your purpose and plan? What is part of your vision, of your calling, of your destiny, is to give eternal life to people. And when you get up in the morning, it should bring an excitement inside of you. I'm going to give life today. I'm going to restore people's life. I'm going to reconnect them with the one who gives life. And that alone should make you so excited. It should, make, it should put you in a place of fire. That you become an altar of fire. You become a, a burning bush for God. With a desire when I speak to people, even my, my enemies, when I'm in their positions, facing them face to face, that when I'm going to speak to them, you don't know what's waiting for you. You're going to get life. You're going to get Jesus. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, who thou have sent. Life is not about you. Life is living to get the people to get to know God. John 14, when you see me, you see my Father. When you know me, you know my Father. Purpose, plan, part of what you suppose you and I are supposed to do. To get the people to get to know God. And the first place that they need to see Jesus is in your lifestyle. Are you walking under that covenant agreement? Are you walking under that blessing? Is there a, frick, a reflection of Jesus in your life? Is there joy in your life? Is there peace in your life? And I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which you gave me to do. Another key. I've discussed it, I think, one of the sessions I've done so far. I think it was yesterday morning session. Why do many people not go into heavenly places? Haven't got that relationship of intimacy with God. Because they have not finished what they were instructed by God to do in the past. Jesus said, I have finished everything that thou hast told me to do. A true love relationship with God on the throne of first love means I've got a desire to do everything for him in excellence. The way Colossians 3 verse 17 says, and, and 3 verse 21, 22, there it says that everything you do must do, you must do to glorify Him. Everything you must do must be as if it is Him doing it Himself. And that is what we to have to do. Every instruction that God has given you, every plan, every assignment that you must do it and finish because He's a finisher of all work that He started. That we must move into that place of excellence and finish everything. So what do I, you and I need to go and do now? Go back to your past. Go through your journals. Go and look. What have I not finished that God has asked of me to do? 
so that my words can be the same. God, why ain't I coming to heaven? I have finished everything you told me to do. And that is a big thing in people's life because it's all about trust. Remember, God is often a relationship of trust. His word is yea and amen. If he has spoken, if he's made a promise, it is done. But we need to come and fulfill our part of the covenant by showing him through our actions that our words, our actions are yea and amen. And I've glorified thee on the earth and I have finished the work which you gave me to do. And now, our Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. What is Jesus actually asking? Lord, let your fullness come into me. When you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, your Lord, I say, when you got, not saved, when you got re Reborn, there's a difference. Reborn, 1 John 3, 1 John 5 says, those who are truly gone through salvation who are reborn will not sin. That, will, that means you won't do anything that you know it's going to be sin. Like, I won't go out tonight and go and drink. Get drunk because I know it is wrong. There are unknown sin, which God understands. You might be in a conversation with somebody or a group, and after it you think, oh, I've said that. Maybe that was wrong. That maybe what, that was against God's will. Lord, I repent that. Unknown sin. But what God speaks to in 1 John 3 and 1 John 5 is known sin. When you start, you know you're angry with somebody or you know you're going to manipulate and do something to manipulate and control somebody. You're busy with witchcraft. You know it. You know each and every one of us know when we're going to do something wrong. But when you went truly through salvation, you will not do those type of sins. He said, glorify thou me with thine own self that I am which I had with thee before the world was. What does God say about you and me? I knew you before you were in the mother's womb. I knew you before the foundations of the earth. What is he actually? And then he says in Genesis, I have created you to my image in the spirit. So at one stage of your life, when you were created, you were in a place of perfection with the fullness of God inside of you. So what does Jesus ask? Come back and restore me to that place of perfection. So your words may be exactly the same as the word of Jesus. Come and touch me and part me to the way that I was. And is that a desire for me? And there's a possibility to go and to see what is, what was in you, what was given to you before the foundations in the earth, before you were in the mother's womb. All to do with your DNA is taking on the DNA, the genealogy of your father in heaven. That's what happened with Enoch. When you take on the genealogy and you've truly died in yourself, you became nothing so that he becomes everything, you go to a place where you can see what was, what is, what is to come. Remember, God is beginning and end. And that is the possibility in your life. These are true possibilities. Then you, when you truly get united one with him, that you become beginning and end with him because you inside of him. That's another teaching. 
So you need to have be a, a desire, you need to have to, uh, to have a desire to become the same that you was before you were in the mother's womb. And I have manifested thy name unto the men which you gave me out of the world. Thine, thine they were, and thou gave me them, and they have kept thy word. Here's your other key. What do you and I need to do? We need to manifest the word. But listen. Listen what he says now. After I manifested the word, they all have kept it. The only way that you can do that to truly bring people in salvation to being reborn is if you live the truth of God. If you live in unity with Him, that you are touched with Him, that you in 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 obedience with Him, and that you become a reflection of Him. Because once people have seen Jesus, they will never go back. Another desire. I need to manifest the word, the truth of the word. No doctrine and religion and philosophy and this and that. There is the world is sick of that. People want to see Jesus. And you and I have been given that. We've got that impartation. To reveal Jesus. Now they have known that all things whatsoever that have given me are from you, from God. So now, your lifestyle must be such a lifestyle. It must be, let's say it's so supernatural. So out there that people must think, this is impossible. This is not natural. And by that I don't mean it must be a lifestyle of riches and finances and everybody is a millionaire. No. Your lifestyle must be a lifestyle of joy, of peace, of freedom, of love in all circumstances that people must know. But it's impossible for us as human beings to live like that. There must be a greater God, Jesus Christ, that must must have touched this person in whose life this person is seated. For I have given unto them the words which you gave me, and they have received them, and have known and surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thee, you did send me. Manifest Jesus. When you tell them a Jesus, they must see it in your life. I pray for them. I pray not, listen, there's another great key to this. You're going to be shocked now. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. But for them which you have given me, for they are mine, yours. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I'm glorified in them. Now, now we're going to touch that religious spirit. I pray for them, those you have given me, not for the world. What do we do? We caught up in such religion and we start praying for people and nations and things that God has never told you to pray for. For each and every person here on earth, he has appointed somebody else to cover that area or that group of people or that nation. 
but we're trying to impress people through our prayers and, and this glamorous prayers and the most amazing words and we touch the nations and everything, things that God has never mandated you to pray for. I pray for them which you have given me. So who am I going to pray for tonight? Lord, tonight you have given them to me. I pray for them. And that's why many of our prayers are, don't get heard. We start praying for nations and things and we release things, nothing happens. You have not got the mandate. Now you must go to God and ask him, Lord, who have you appointed to me? Who you sent across my path that I need to pray for? And if which nation, you'll always pray for your own nation, definitely. And you've always got to pray for Israel, definitely is instruction. Some people that have been appointed in ministry to go to nations, you will pray for the nations that God sends you to. Now your prayer life is going to be what? Powerful. Focused. Now uh, you, oh, you won't hear excuses. Yeah, but Edith, I can't pray that long. I've got too many things to pray for. There are too many countries in the world. And, 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 and. Now you've got your vision, your appointed people, your appointed nation who you need to pray for. It changes your whole lifestyle. Now you're going to have more time to soak in his presence. And now I'm no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I've come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. I'm no more in the world. What happens? Walking in the Spirit. That's a key. That must be a desire in you. Enoch walked between heaven and earth. People walked in the spirit. I don't know how many of you have experienced it. I've had encounters many times. That you walk and you see your body walking, but you're sitting with Jesus in heaven and you're discussing what the people around you are talking. You need to see yourself as not of this world. Let me just touch that. Don't astral travel. That's from the devil. That's what the Satanists and the occult do. They move in their souls out of their body. Jesus himself, the Holy Spirit, will take you into the Spirit. Be very careful. Don't go and beg. Don't go and beg. To have outer body of experiences. You're opening yourself up for familiar spirits. Let him come whenever he wants to and take you. And you'll know when it's him. I'm not of the world. How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as a supernatural being? That are just here to come and restore the glory of God. Because I am from heaven. And that is the way that you need to start living. The way that you start seeing from the spirit and not in the natural. As soon in all our circumstances, as soon as we start looking in the natural, we've lost. We're now soul dimension. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. And thee thou, that thou gave me, I've kept, and none of them is lost. But the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. What did he say? I looked after the ones that you have put in front of me. 
none of them got lost. Your lifestyle should be in such a way that you try and impact each and every person so that they never get lost again. So again, your circle of influence gets a little bit smaller so that you can focus that your words becomes the word of Jesus. None of them get lost. You see, these are all, all keys and things that God's release in your life to have a lifestyle of a face-to-face -face relationship. And now come... And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. What does the truth of God release? Joy. Joy as part of God's covenant relationship is part of the being of who he is joy is your strength so when you release joy it means that you are releasing truth into people by releasing truth you are directing people to god you're giving them an excitement because then the covenant of God will be fulfilled in their lives. Victory. Victory is guaranteed. Joy overcomes you. It doesn't matter what the devil says. It doesn't matter what he's trying to do. You've got joy. And I've given them thy word and the world has hated them because they're not of the world even as I am not of the world. Again, see yourself as ambassador of heaven. Coming from heavenly places, coming to your place of visitation to come and do your assignment to restore the glory of God, to take dominion of what earth has lost to Satan. What I've told them now at a conference last week in, in St. Louis in Missouri. <coughs> You've got to restore the bride. God has called us to be the bride. And that's why you'll see the earth. Diamonds are all in the outer layer of the earth. Why? The ring of covenant. Prophetic action of God. Ring of covenant. The earth being created to restore his bride. You and I. Once we've been restored to bride, heaven. I pray, not that, I pray not that those should take them out of the world, but that those should keep them from the evil. What is it? Whenever God puts people across your way, family, friends, whoever, people at your work, everything, you must intercede for them. That is a test of your love for God. Why? Because the heart of the Father are for the lost. And if you've got His heart, you will intercede for the lost. The people you've got to influence, your group, you need to intercede for them so that they don't fall for the evil one. Most of the times we pray for ourselves and our families. We give God our shopping list. What we want. They are not of the world even as I am not of the world. You see how many times he comes and he puts um, emphasis on it. He is not of this world. God puts emphasis on you and I. We are not of this world. Sanctify, here's a great, great key. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. It's 
to carry on before I go. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Sanctify them. I'll come back to truth now. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. What does that refer to? You and I have been created. One of our assignments on earth is to do what? To equip people. To train and equip and release them to go into the world, to go and get the lost. All ends of the earth. And unfortunately in the world, the body of Christ, the church, is sick. Because what does most leaders do? They don't equip and release. When the leader sees some people in his organization, of his church, of his move, standing up in the power of God, they're always shutting down because they feel threatened. It actually just exposes them in the relationship with God. Because if somebody else starts moving in God, you must be so excited because it's about God, it's about the kingdom. You should elevate them, you should help them, you should encourage them. Because the more we encourage people to step into that position, the sooner the earth will be filled with the glory and the sooner heaven will be on earth and the sooner you can have a glorious lifestyle. Part of your duty is equip. You cannot equip people if you don't walk in it yourself. As I also say, don't teach what you don't walk in. That's a problem in the body of Christ. You've got all these holy sermons and preachings, but you go back to the house of that person, God's definitely not even there. What do you and I need to do? We need to get equipped. And what does the body of Christ do? They go to teachings and books to get their equipping. Instead of the book of life. Oh my. That is the first place you go to. Lift my eyes up to heaven. What did they call Jesus? Rabbi, teacher, master. What is he in your life? Is he the rabbi? Is he the teacher? Is he the master? Last year in October, sitting in the palace and Jesus told me, he said, tell the people, if at least 80% what they know of me is not out of the word and from me directly. I am not their rabbi. I don't know them. Here's a challenge for you. You know, I, got, I did conferences in Australia. And I, always, I do it every year at some conferences. I'll ask the people, how many of you have read 12 Christian books in the last year? And at least 80% of the people raise their hands. Then I'll ask them, how many of you have read through the Bible once in the last three years? At least only 10%, maybe. Something's wrong. Something's truly wrong. And that by that I don't say God does not use books and CDs and everything. He does. I'm busy writing three books. But you know what? In my life, I'm not allowed to read books or listen to CDs. I've got hundreds of books. I get as presents all over the world. One day I might be able to read them. But he's my rabbi. He's my teacher. It makes you more powerful. Why? Nobody can come and steal Jesus from me. Nobody can come to me and say it's doctrine or religion. Because you heard it face to face. You sit at his feet. And that is what he wants in the season. You need to be restore him as the position of rabbi. Because he needs to equip you with what? With truth. Only the truth comes out of his mouth. 
Numbers 23, 19, it says that God, Jesus can't lie. And you're only going to have that. The desire to be equipped. If God is everything in your life, if He is your first love. And once you get to know Him and you get to see Him, you're going to start realizing who you are because your identity is locked up inside of Him. Your identity, part of your identity is in the four faces of God as well. So this word is actually an outcry from God to come into a place of relationship and love with you. Listen here. Yeah. Verse 19. It, acts, it comes with, verse 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Listen to verse 19. And this is what's going to start happening. All over the world, the spirit of truth is going to be released. And for their sakes, listen, this is Jesus speaking. I want you to realize it. It's funny though, yesterday morning, I woke up and the Lord kept on telling me, capish, capish, capish. I kept on saying, Lord, what does capish mean? I know it's an Italian word. And we went and we looked on the website. Capish means, do you understand? Do you understand? Now listen, capish. And for their sakes, I, Jesus, sanctified myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Jesus comes, sanctifies himself with truth so that he can sanctify. Your key for sanctification in your life is truth. Sanctification starts in your heart. That means as Lord, show me my heart. The truth of my heart. I can tell you, if each and every one had to know the truth of our hearts, we'll be shocked. I had an encounter, I was on my deathbed in December and January. And every time after I came out of the coma, a spirit of truth came upon me. And God showed me my heart. I was frightened, I was travailing, I was crying. Things that I never thought is in me was there. People that you thought you had forgiven everything and more and more. So many times we ask God, show us our hearts, but we only allow him to show us a partial, uh, a partially because we don't want to go deeper into what the truth is. Jesus sanctified him through truth. How much more should you and I? And this is the season and the time now, 2015, and everybody prophesies and says, and I've prophesied it myself, how many times from the September, the glory of God's going to be released in the measure that the world has never, ever seen. But if you want to walk in that it's time that we stop playing Jesus, that we start, start and getting truth in our lives. To look at all things, what we do, all our actions, our reactions, our words. What is our intentions? What is it about? Is it truly about God or is it about us? 
Everything that I ask Jesus, is it about him or is it about us? And the truth sets you free. Bring things in the light. Release it to take away the platform of the devil. And the first place for truth to manifest is inside of you and inside of your house. Because what do we do? We make, we make the right noises when we're out there between people and we we this Hollywood stars out there of perfection. But inside of our houses, it's all about, all but perfection. And God's go and this season that's coming, those who don't live in truth will be exposed. What happened to Adam and Earth? Ach, Adam and Earth, Adam and Eve. When they sinned. They stood naked. They saw their nakedness. When you don't walk in truth, Satan reveals your nakedness to the world. And what did they do? Instead of repenting, they covered them with a fig leaf, which is a false covering. That's why in the New Testament, God went and what did he do to the fig leaf? You will bear no fruit. Why? Behind a leaf of a fig tree, the fruit are hidden. What did God actually do? He always goes back to the Old Testament. He linked the old and the new. Adam and Eve to the fig tree and the new. What did he actually declare? There will be no more a false covering over you again, a fig leaf. The truth will always be exposed. That, that is a place that we need to do. You know, if we, if we walk in a prophetic circle, if we release prophetic word to people, they love it if you tell them all the good things. But if you align them or rebuke them, they take offense. They don't want to face the truth. A lifestyle of Jesus. That you have died in yourself, crucified yourself, means I love it when I get aligned because it takes me closer to Him. It's not a curse to be aligned. It's an act of love from God. It's an outcry from God. He shows you the truth in your life because He desires so much to be one with you. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me. There's your key. Unity with him. Unity can only happen when you are sanctified. Sanctified means as well that you move into a place of holiness. People, how dare we, how arrogant dare we be if we think that we can walk in the fullness of unity when our lives are full of sin. I know in, in South Africa, where I come from, and in my town especially, um, in our town, a lot of rich people. And what they do, they buy all their kids' cars before they have licenses. And I've warned, and I've warned, and I've warned, stop it, stop it. And I heard now while I'm here the other night, on, I think last, two nights ago, that a young girl got a car, 
15 years old in South Africa, you can, or she's 16 years old in South Africa, you only get a license when you're 18. She went to a school prom and she died in an accident. But the mother have prayed, Lord, cover in your blood and protect her. How dare we ask for God to come and bless your sin, to align with your sin. That is what we're doing when we pray a blessing upon our sin. We're actually trying to force Jesus to align if you think he's going to do it. No. We need to come into that place of holiness when he manifested me, ripping me out of death as Lord of hosts. It's a dimension of God that I've never seen in my life and I fear to see him again as that, as Lord of hosts. Because you fear to die when you see his love, authority, goodness, glamour, majesty. And the glory which you gave me, I've given them that they may be one, even as we are one. It must be a desire. Your life must not only be focused on yourself. Your life must be focused on the body of Christ, that your desire is the same as Jesus to reunite everything and everybody with him. The book of the the word is a book of reconciliation. I and them and you and me, that they may be made perfect in one. Restore them to what they were before they were in the mother's womb. You can only do that. Pray for others to be restored in perfection if you walk in the fullness of love. Otherwise, your prayers will only be about yourself. And that the world may know that you have sent me and has loved them as you have loved me. What is your duty? To release the presence of love, the greatest weapon of all. Love overcomes everything. You and I need to move into this place where we release love that will convict and convince people to come to salvation. You cannot do it unless God is your first love. You cannot do it unless you have learned to receive love and that you have learned to love as well. You cannot do it if you don't love your enemies. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which you have given me, for you love me before the foundation of the world. How does he keep them where he is? By giving them a lifestyle of Jesus. Teach and equip them how to walk in oneness with God. He's inside of us, but we're also inside of him. Get them to live a lifestyle that they are inside of him all the time. So then we are all together, kept together together all the time. A righteous Father, the world has not known, known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that you have sent me. Key, Jesus knew his Father. We need to get to know Jesus need to spend time in the word. We need to meditate on the word. We need to sit in the place of stillness in the chambers of his heart. Spending time with him. Daniel 11, 32, where Daniel speaks and says, only those who know their God will keep on standing. And the times that we are going in now, 
Believe me, as the glory of God is going to come, the trials and tribulations are also going to come. But it's going to be your choice which of the two you're going to live in. It's going to be all about your relationship. <coughs> Get to know your God. Get your supernatural life so that the people can see it and desire it. You know what? Each and every person on earth has got a desire for the one that gave love, uh, love gave life. Even a satanic pe person. If you speak to them and you start, start telling them about God and how much he loves them, you activate it here yeah, in the stem of their brain. The desire for the one that gives life. And life is love. Love overcomes everything. Love gives life. And I have declared unto you then thy name, and I will declare it, that the love wherewith you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. I have declared thy name. Doesn't mean that you need to go and walk in the street and stand on the street corners and start declaring Jesus. I declared the name of Jesus through my lifestyle. When people look at your lifestyle, they must come to you. When they see you, they must come to you and say, how come you live like this? Gives you opportunity to declare. This is where we all need to go. That the love wherewith you have loved me may be in them and I in them. Become instruments of love. It's all about love. The whole gospel is about love. Jesus is the love. Creation, everything happened with the seed of love. If we will be obedient to John 17, that is a natural activation of a supernatural lifestyle means that you will walk in the spirit i declare it i decree it i confirm it it is done then and once you start living it once you start encountering encountering god your life will be radical you'll have a glorious lifestyle God has given us all the keys. What are you and I going to do about it? I remember now, nobody else, nobody else can do it for you. You need to do it yourself. Nobody else can build your relationship with God. You need to do it yourself. It's a season now that God doesn't want to hear words anymore. He wants to see the truth, the love, the desire in your actions.
especially when I look at you just the whole time while I was walking in front, God keeps on showing me a roller coaster. And in the past, you would have said the roller coaster is negative, but somebody's lifestyle is like this. But God says He's releasing a roller coaster of absolute joy and fun in a new season that is going to take you in. There's major change coming in your life. Major change for the good. And he's heard your voice, he's heard your outcry over the years. He's seen your obedience. Sometimes you feel if you felt like you want to run. Sometimes you even felt I don't want to live. He's come to reward you in a great way. You're going to be blown away. You're going to see the God of the impossible manifest. And you're going to become a powerful instrument of love. You're a person of restoration. Because you always accept it to be the least. He's going to make you the first. He's going to make you the head. It's a total turnaround on your life coming. And it's, it's on its way with speed. Be ready. Be ready. You're going to be a voice one. I see you writing things. I see you writing books to help women. I see you in marriages. I see you re just restoring, restoration, 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 because you've got so much love in you. Bless you. sitting in the back row with the glasses on there. I see in you there's a creativity inside of you that has not really come out yet. And God shows you there's a season coming that you're going to have an invention. patent, something amazing that he's going to give you and that you're going to release into this world and through that you will spread his word, that will become a testimony of a radical change that will become a testimony of God and that will encourage so many people in life that have not got opportunities to do what they want to do that have not got finances they don't think they can do anything God's going to use you and I even see you traveling around speaking to people organizations giving them testimony of your invention and how you received it from God and it's going to bring chains it's a big it's a great level of humility in you. I want to remind you when, when, when this season comes, when this invention comes in your life, I can't put a time limit, I can't say 10 years, 5 years, whatever. I just know it's definitely coming. Always remember where it comes from. Because out of that, riches are going to come, finances are going to come in, and God's going to open doors for you, and you're going to be the door to other people. You're going to have youth and people opening doors for them to change their lives as well. But always stay humble. Always remember who the source is. Bless you in the name of Jesus. It's Lady and the Blonde there. got a desire for more of God and I think sometimes there are doubts in your life as to what does God want to use me in what, where is my power for God what do I need to release and many times 
in life you'll fall in with a group doing something or being part of a group. But God's going to take you out of it. It's just like some morn one morning you're just going to wake up and know, I need to do this. And then you're going to start walking in the power of God. He's going to give you so much confidence in your identity. And there are people in your life that have a lot of jealousy against you. Friends, family, that don't truly understand who you are. And through that, that one magic moment in your life, you're going to be a new creation, a new person that will walk so focused with such a man that such an authority. And I see you speaking to women's groups, women's groups. Telling them about Jesus. Break all inner vows upon your life. things that you said, I will never do that. I don't think I'll ever be able to do it. You said it a few times. God's going to show you you can do anything. You've got it all. Yes. given you such an hunger and desire for him. You're like a fire. Everybody around you, you pull into the kingdom. You're like John 17. Yesterday, Bobby told your dad that he's going to go on a trip. I want to tell you, you're going to go on many trips. You're going to go on many trips because of your heart, of your desire. I see Africa. see Asia, I see South America. It will become places where you will influence. And you're going to train and equip. You're going to train and you're going to equip. Because God can trust you because of your lifestyle. have your bags ready because God's going to move and sudden moves with you. Going to come back from a trip and you're going to start doing something and suddenly it's just going to say, there you go again, have your bags packed and ready. And your tickets and things will be supernaturally done. It will be done for you. People will buy it for you without even asking. Because it's a favor of God in your life. you desire, it will be given to you. Just keep that fire burning. Feed on the word. Feed in his presence. Keep it burning. Keep it burning. Don't ever compromise. Don't ever compromise. Satan's going to send friends, people that will try and distract you and take you away from the intimacy of God. Don't go there. Stay where at your place and level of intimacy where you are, but even a little greater.
do, I believe God wants to do. You people come to the front. Just come and receive that we just activate love inside of you again. Love and truth. Love and truth inside of you. That those fires on your altars and your hearts gets ignited. It becomes explosive. It becomes that dunamis fire. So the explosive fires for God. And on Wednesday night we'll speak how to function in that, in that power, in that fire, in that blessing, in the provision of heaven. As you come to the front, I want you to come and receive. Just stand with your hands. Stretch out. I'm just going to touch your hands. I don't want you to pray. I don't want you to do anything. You just receive impartation from God. Don't worry if you're going to fall or get slain or not slain. It's not about being slain or not. It's about receiving. And you're not receiving from me. You're receiving from God. If you want to receive, come to the front. That I lay hands. Father, we just thank you. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you all the honor. It's your touch, it's your love. It's you who have changed us. It is you who have renewed us tonight. And Holy Spirit, we just want to walk with you. never want to be separated from you. We bless you. Bless each and every one with the fullness of your love. And each and every family represented, each and every church, the fullness of your love. We love you.